what's up guys welcome or welcome back to my channel for today's video i decided to film my five star reads for this year i just want to thank my best friend christina she was the one that gave me the idea even though i'm sure there's videos like that on youtube anyway she was just like why don't you just bring it to your channel and i was like why not i needed an extra video to film this week i mean this month so welcome to my five star reads <laughs> now i don't have many i actually have thought about a lot of the five stars that i gave this year and some of them did not deserve it i'm gonna be honest <laughs> so if you see a book that i have rated or if you know of a book that I've rated five stars that is not on this list, it's because I rethought about it and was like, mm, maybe you were just being too nice. <laughs> <coughs> but, um, I have one Kindle book that is a five stars, and I have one book that I do not have physically with me, so I'm going to talk about those two first. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 physical books. So let's get started. The first book that I gave a five star reads, oh, by the way, this is in no particular order, but the first book that I gave a five star reads was Final Girls by Riley Sager. I'm 90% sure I loaned it to my cousin, so I don't have a physical copy, but it is my book. This book was crack. <laughs> Oh my god, the the fact, the plot twist alone gave it a five stars. But of course that's what's supposed to give it a five stars, you know what I mean? But the fact that it had me thinking 24-7. I love psychological thrillers. I've said it once and I've said it again. I will say it till the end of time. I love, psych let me turn my TV off. I love psychological thrillers and... The fact that this book had me thinking the whole time. Riley Sager did his shit. That's all I have to say. That is what I love about a psychological thriller. If you do not have me thinking 24-7, even if it's not even a psychological thriller, even if it's a thriller or a mystery thriller, if I'm not thinking the whole time, I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't like it. I'm good. I'd rather not. But the next book that I have is called The <laughs> on the Block by Amy Award. <clears throat> I read it on my Kindle app on my phone because I don't have a Kindle just yet. I'm praying and hoping that I get it for Christmas. <laughs> but I read it on my Kindle so much so that I asked my girlfriend to buy it for me for Christmas. <laughs> That's how good the book is. It is about a woman who's a virgin who tells everybody she has a boyfriend, a football boyfriend, I believe, because she doesn't want to go to the high school reunion alone because she used to get bullied when she was younger in high school. First of all, first of all, let's rewind. She's a virgin. I rarely read things like that, but representation matters the guy chef's kiss he's such a sweetheart she's thick like hella thick like she curvy curvy and when i say curvy i don't mean like i mean like she got a little love handles which i love and the fact that this man loved every little curve of her body the way that they fell in love over time <laughs> and the spicy scenes yo the way she i can't even say that because it's gonna be a spoiler bro that book i read it back in october it won book of the month for me but like let me tell you this was the perfect perfect romance like it had the perfect amount of spice, it had the perfect amount of plot, it had the perfect amount of plot twist. Not When I say plot twist, I literally mean like her standing up for herself, herself basically. That's what I mean. So the first romance I have is a YA romance and this one tore my heart into pieces. 
it broke like it literally just ripped it out my chest just and then like that if he had been with me by laura nolan now now when nolan i say nolan i think it's now when anyway this is about adam and finn they used to be best friends but then something changed she had a boyfriend he had a girlfriend they stopped being friends right this book is based off of if he had been with me things would have been different meaning if i would have told him a very long time ago that my boy best friend i was madly in love with him things would have ended differently when i tell you this tells you what happens at the end of the book it tells you in the first chapter in the prologue it tells you what happened but by the time that you reach the end, you done forgot about what happened. That you're so invested into these characters and you're so invested in, 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 in genuinely finding out if she ever says something to this boy. That you forget what happens. I found this book from Haley Pham. She read it in a video, I think. And I fully cannot explain to you the amount of tears i cried i was on the phone with my girlfriend bawling my eyeballs out and she was like it's not that serious i was like you don't even know you don't know you don't understand <laughs> like it was so beautiful and then like the fact that you like this whole book you follow this girl through i think middle school and high school you literally follow the way and the fact that she explains certain things and certain topics i'm like it brings me back to a memory of like i'm 24 i haven't been in high school since i was 18 and i definitely haven't been in middle school since i was younger so the fact that you go through time some of the stuff she was explaining i was just like i felt that girl like i used to feel like that back in high school like what like i remember going through certain things like that that she explained and i was like this is the perfect ya book it explains how you can get your heart broken it explains how you can heal your own heart it could explain how if you just said something a lot of things would be different the next book i have <coughs> is an adult romance <coughs> it's love theoretically by ali hazelwood this is about elsie and jack they are both physicists and they don't like each other why because she's supposed to be fake dating his brother and he calls her out on her bullshit i loved this book now mind you it was a little bit of a slow burn just just a little bit but it was so perfect i didn't get some of the jokes because they were physicist jokes <laughs> and Allie Hazelwood is definitely known for like writing scientifical type of romance-esque type books and that's not my judge but I got this based on the cover first of all because I love the color orange but I was like I excuse me I want to see what Allie Hazelwood's about I wanted this one because I don't know who I saw rave about it on YouTube but I saw it and I was like you know what fuck it like let me get Allie Hazelwood let me see what the hype is about let me let me see and I loved it it was a little complicated at times but I did love it if I can go back and reread this and fully understand what the jokes were and what the like conversations were about then I probably would enjoy it even more but it was perfect for me now we are going to get into the murder mysteries mysteries thrillers psychological thrillers that aspect um the first book i have is the perfect place to die by bryce moore i read this back in january if i'm not mistaken um this is about zaretta zaretta's sister goes missing in chicago and she basically works the last she basically works the last job that her sister worked to try to find her sister and she comes in contact with a notorious nope lies an infamous mass murderer so like a serial killer i loved the fact that this was a point of view book because you got to see this girl struggle to find her little sister struggle and when i tell you struggle this girl went through the ends of earth to try to find her little sister as one would like i would do the absolute most 
to find my little siblings if I had any. I would do the absolute most to find my siblings now and they're all older than me. But this girl comes in contact with a very, very bad man. This book is based on, loosely based on a guy that was an actual serial killer in the 1800s, in the 1890s, in Chicago. His name was It, I feel like the fact that I knew who it was based on prior to reading it, it was... It kind of sucked because I already knew what was going to happen because I already knew who the killer was, but it still left me like, what's going to happen next? Like, is she going to find out? Like, you know, like it still left me on the edge because of the way that she set it up. She didn't, she didn't set it up. Like, here's the answer right here in your face. If you didn't know who the serial killer was prior to this book, you definitely would not have guessed it. Because the way, I kept saying she, I'm sorry, Bryce Moore is a guy, fully misgendered him, okay, Bryce Moore, the way that he set it up was pretty much, how do I explain it, he set it up where there were multiple answers that could be the killer, if that makes sense. Like, there were multiple people that could have been the killer if you didn't know about the actual real serial killer it's based on. But in the back, it also explains who the serial killer is about. Like, it explains who he is and, like, what he actually did in the 1890s. The next book I have is Five Survives by Holly Jackson. Um, I just want to thank my brother... He got me this for Christmas last year, and I ate it up. I ate it up. I wanted this book so badly because the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I personally did not like that series. It was not for me. But this book, this book eight, this is about <clears throat> six friends that go on a road trip, and they get stuck <clears throat> somewhere. And they all think that it's an accident, but it's actually not. It's literally planned. So the fact that it's planned, they have to find out who's hiding secrets, who's betraying another one another, basically all this fun shit. Only five of them survive. The, let me tell you right now, the title, it's not fake. It's not. It tells you the truth. Only five survive. Let me tell you, I read this in a day and a half, I think, or like two days. I was on the phone with my girlfriend reading it and she was like, what happened? Tell me what happened. Who did it? Who? Like, we were so invested on trying to figure out who set this shit up and why they set it up. And let me tell you, the main character's name is Red. Yes, the main character's name is Red. Red's best friend is a bitch. <laughs> Red's best friend is not her best friend. How do you allow somebody to talk shit about your best friend behind their back and be okay with it? Where do you do that at? Because if somebody talks shit about my best friends, I'm going to smack them the fuck out. Like, what? Like, no. Just no. Just no. Just no. The next book I have is Tell Me What Really Happened by Chelsea Sidoti. I hope that's how I'm, I'm, you pronounce their name. This is another YA mystery. This is about a girl named... What was her name? Maylee. Her name was Maylee. And Maylee goes missing. And her friends basically have to tell the police officers what happened step by step and how it went down in a police interview so this is basically like if police are interviewing them and they're just retelling the story this was so interesting to read it was a little complicated at first but it was so interesting to read 
and you get five point of views i believe let me see one two three four no you get four point of views yeah four point of views and then you get the police like interviews and the police like questionings and stuff like that i really love this because I believed wholeheartedly that it was just a serial killer that killed this poor little child or that kidnapped her or hurt her or anything of that sort. But the way the ending had me shook, I was like, what? <laughs> what the fuck i was really sitting there like there's no fucking way that that just happened it put me in tears it really put me in tears <laughs> the last like thriller mystery psychological thing that i have is the locked door by freedom mcfadden this is my very first freedom mcfadden book and i ate it up i ate it up i thought this bitch was crazy this is about nora nora basically her dad was a serial killer killing women in their basement she moves to another town she basically starts her life over as a success successful surgeon and nobody really knows who she's about except when young girls or one of her patients start dying in the same horrific manner that her dad used to kill people the police start looking at her but they have nothing to pin her on as long as they don't look in her basement i thought this bitch was crazy i thought she was in an asylum at first i was like okay she may be the serial killer then i thought oh it's that cute boy that she used to date then i thought oh it's probably the doctor then i thought this bitch is probably locked up in one of them comfy rooms where if you bang your head against the wall you're not gonna hurt yourself with a fucking straight jacket on I thought this bitch was insane. The plot twist had me shook. Now, I know I constantly say that the plot twist is great, but let me tell you, I don't want to ruin it for you. That's the point. That's why I just vaguely say it's the plot twist. It's always the plot twist. Princess and the Grilled Cheese Sandwich by Bea Munoz. This was basically about a princess that doesn't want to be a princess. And the princess's dad tells the princess, like, dress as a boy. In order for you to get my inheritance, you have to be a boy. Because they're not going to give it to a princess unless you get married. So this princess dresses like a boy, moves to a different town, basically gets the inheritance of their father, right? And they fall in love with a princess named princess brie oh my god the level of cute the level of cute i loved this book this book thank you ashley ashley got me this book for my for my birthday this year it was immaculate it was it really like if i could sell my soul for this book i would i would that's how good this book was the fact that it was two like gays falling in love but she didn't know she was gay and she was comfortable living her life like a boy it was so pretty and then the ending and then the story about the writer my spicy romances these are the last four books that i have um the first one praise by sarah kate now this is about charlie charlie dumps her boyfriend beau because he ain't shit she stumbles upon she has to go to Bo's father's apartment or house or business to get her half of the check emerson grant owns a club called the salacious players club 
this club is where you can experience and, and, and live your best sexual life, basically. She get a glimpse. She gets a glimpse of this lifestyle. And she ed wants to be Emerson Grant's submissive. The problem is Emerson Grant is her ex-boyfriend Bo's father. When I bought this book, I bought it just because it said the word praise on it. And I was like, oh, this gotta be good. This gotta be good. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I have praise, eyes on me, give me more, and mercy. I'm waiting for highest bidder, and I'm waiting for Madam to come out. <gasps> My fucking heart. The whole series. I'm gonna do an entire video on this series, but the whole series is chef's kiss but this book this book right here oh my god this book was crack this book was crack. the plot the plot the plot let let's not even talk about what happens with the plot twist let's not even talk about this if she fucks his dad let's talk about the plot itself the fact that she learns that she has a praise kink and the fact that she learns she likes to be submissive and the fact that she learns how to embrace her sexuality and her sexual being self oh my god it was it was the perfect amount of plot the spice was spicing it was spicy let me tell you oh my god the way let's go through my book hooked by emily mcintyre miss emily miss mcintyre This is a Peter Pan, Captain Hook, and Wendy retelling. But the enemy gets the girl. I want to meet this woman and be like, yo, I don't know what you put in here, but it's crack, lady. It's crack. Like, I, I don't know what made you think about writing something like this, but whatever it was, keep doing it. These two books are... There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil by Sarah, Sarah, Sophie Lark. This is the the Sinners duet. I talked about this in October. If you're gonna read this one, you have to have this one in hand because this one does end on a cliffhanger. And this one starts as if it was just like another chapter in this book. I loved Cole. Even though he was crazy, I loved him. Cole Blackwell, he is, oh my god, book boyfriend? Book boyfriend. Anyway, this is about a guy who stalks a girl. He's also a serial killer, but he only kills men. Um, somehow, Cole has a lot of money, right? And Mara is dirt poor, but she's an artist. So somehow, they come in contact. Like, they, their lives collide. I know how their lives collide already, but can't ruin it for you. And when their lives lives collide, all hell breaks loose. And I ate every piece up. I read this book, and I was going to read something in between these two, and I was like, I can't do it. I have to find out what happens. I have to, because there's no fucking way that I can sit here and just ignore the fact that this was the way that this ended. Does that make sense? yeah yeah and the snakes the snakes are very very prominent to the book and when i seen that i was like Ooh, as they should <laughs> but those were my five star reads for this year um i definitely had more than i thought that i would i definitely will be a little bit more strategic next year when i do give books five star reads but i really did like the books that i read and i really did like all of these and if i had to reread them i definitely would probably keep them at a five star read but i hope you guys liked this video i hope it wasn't too too long and i will see you guys next week bye